Now in here you can get just about anything from the basics like an all-star hat, all-star jacket, all-star shirt. Then there's the not so basic, like this all-star windsock. And of course there's my favorite coming up from the rear, the all-star boxer shorts. Well, you don't have to get matter. You know, George, I'm a little disappointed. I come out here to my alma mater and nobody even knows who I am anymore. It's one of those Oh my god. Hi, gals. Well, I'm here to do a head-to-head. -head. Of course, I'm picking Anderson to win, and George Vogel is picking Turpin to win. Ew! Welcome, George Vogel! He doesn't know anything! Oh, oh, boy. I don't know how you brainwash those girls, Brenneman, but it certainly wasn't with charm. Let me give the ladies a little history lesson with my friends Chris and Jeff. This year in head-to-head, -head, my record is three wins and one loss. Now, after this game, my record is going to be four wins and one loss, and you can take that to the bank. I know Turpin has yet to win in 88, but against Anderson, the Spartans have won 9 of 12. And talk of Anderson has the blood boiling. Well, Monday was great. I mean, we were hitting, knocking everybody down. There's, I mean, fights were breaking out. It was unusual. And Tommy, since this is old home week for you, I went through some archives and came up with your senior picture. Boy, take a look at that, guys. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> oh, it is pretty brutal. Maybe you should give it to your boys from Anderson Friday night. Probably help them out. For the man on the picture, I'm George Vogel going head to head. And we will do a poster on that this week. Tomorrow, final preseason game is Friday night, and win or lose, the Bengals will still be an international attraction. Our lonesome George Vogel has, or has, the story of the Bengals fans across the sea. Bengal fans come from all over the tri-state area, but rarely do they come from across the Atlantic Ocean. About 200 miles north of London, England, lies a town named Huddersfield. And from Huddersfield comes Peter Anstock. Pete had visited Cincinnati two years ago during the NFL strike. He fell in love with the Bengals, but suffered along with everyone else through scenes like these. One year later, he was able to come back to Bengal land. When I came back to Cincinnati, I, I've been, a, you know, followed the Bengals all the way through this year, the Super Bowl, yeah, and it was a great time. Pete's such a big football fan, he drove all the way here to New Orleans to watch the Bengals play the Saints in preseason football. Heck, I know people who wouldn't walk across their own street to watch preseason football. Pete made the trip with one of his Cincinnati friends, Steve Sabo. Talking football with Steve is easy for Pete. But if he has to talk to someone from England about American football, it can get tough. Of course, they're used to soccer, and in soccer, the game clock is rarely stopped. I told my father that the game is like three hours long, and he's like, you know, the clock only goes for an hour. And, <laughs> you know, he can't believe that there's so many uh, stoppages, uh, and that's kind of a strange thing. And while Pete's had a good time here hoisting his Bengal umbrella in enemy territory, he'll soon be returning to England but he'll still have good reason to root for the orange and black. There's a guy in England uh, who's a um, San Francisco 49ers fan. Uh, he's the only person I've ever seen. He's from my university, and he's got a 49ers jacket, so I'll be back there now with a Bengals jacket, so that's going to cause some uh, rivalry there. Imagine that. Someone sticking up for the Bengals 4,000 miles from Riverfront Stadium. Cleveland should be so lucky. I'm George Vogel, News 5 Sports. Bengals have a lot of fans. Queen and the Queen Mother, I understand, are big Bengal fans. Reginald. Yes. Reginald. I'm sure there's yes. a Reginald. You know, uh, Pete, throughout this whole thing, has said that he wants to do is just play ball. And although he's maintained his innocence for the most part, he hasn't said much. Our George, our George Vogel, who is a man of many words, is down at the stadium where the Reds take on the Braves tonight. George, is Pete saying anything right now? It's pretty much status quo, Ken. Uh, before the game, as has Pete's done, you know, Pete has done in the past, he hasn't said much before the game. Pretty much the case today. I saw him in his office just a few minutes ago. Uh, he said he didn't want to comment on today's court ruling, but he did say he was in no way surprised by what happened. Uh, what the people are talking about down here more than anything are the Reds' injuries. You know, Chris Sabo going on the disabled list today. That seems to be a bigger concern for Pete than the court case right now. Okay, George, thanks. I hope you get a ticket and you can get in the game tonight, okay? I'm working on it out here on the plaza level. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll have more sports coming up later on, and of course... <laughs> well, listen, that's, uh, that's what we're going to have uh, for you right now from down here. We're going to send it back to George. In the studio, George, if you're there, take it away. All right, thank you, Lenny. I am here with Curtis.
Curtis, I've never seen those guys so excited. I mean, Eric Davis, not even the day he signed his $9 million contract that I see him doing this number. I mean, the guy, as long as he's been here, I've never seen him so excited. Red's in the middle of a rain delay right now, but they've wrapped up the Western Division. The Dodgers lost in San Francisco 4-3, and that brought on this. The Reds going crazy out on the tarp just after they found out they were Western Division champs. Randy Myers with a, probably the best head first slide of the year there. Then they go out and pay tribute to the fans down at the stadium today. Tell you what, it looks like almost a knot-hole celebration. These guys were little kids again. And uh, moving on to what the next step may be, the playoffs, it looks like the Reds are going to be meeting the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates cut the magic number to one today, which means they've clinched at least a tie with the Mets. About five games left, four games left. It looks like it's going to be the Pirates and the Reds in the National League playoffs. We'll talk more about that a little later. Well, the Reds deserve to be happy today. You got that yeah. right. No, no champagne, though. No. <laughs> September 28th, 1979, the last time the Reds had a celebration like that when they won the West. Yeah. It's been a long time. All right. I know you'll have more a little bit later. Will do. Thanks, George. Well, as George mentioned, there is a rain delay, and we'll check on the status of the weather in just a moment. Stay with us. These guys don't have anywhere else to go now except to celebrate. We'll put it that way. George, Curtis, back to you guys. Thanks, Thanks a Greg. lot, Greg. You know, it's been real exciting. When, when you think about that, we've been watching the Reds come to this point all year. You know, it's, it's been really exciting. Yeah, you, you expected this day to come back in April when they jump off to that lead. It's like, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Well, it finally happens, and, and it, you know, it, it is fun. It is fun. You see the players, I mean, Hal Morris, He's an old throwback, isn't he, with the black stuff under the <laughs> eyes? I kind of like that guy, but an exciting day down at Riverfront. They had a lot of fun. Greg was saying, who do you want to play, Pittsburgh or New York? It looks like Pittsburgh. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. We're going to have that for you. We're going to get it just as soon as we can. But right now, let's okay. head out to Pat Berry. Pat, tell me, what, what is the situation where you are? Well, the situation right now is uh, George Vogel and I are standing here right on Vine Street. Believe it or not, we're right on the other side of you, but you can't see us from the uh, all the crowd. What a crowd, huh, Yeah, George? nice crowd out here regardless of the rain. You know, one of the fans stopped me and said, this isn't rain, this is all the tears from Oakland. Hey, to which man. I said, it should be raining harder in that case. I like it. The police have now stopped the traffic. The buses are now moving on 4th Street. They'll be making a right up Vine Street and stopping right here at Fountain Square. Marge and Lou are coming in separate cars, and they'll stop here too, and what we're going to try and attempt to do is talk to some of the guys as they get out of the bus. That's the situation down here. The street is uh, absolutely closed off, closed off. It's got lots of people. Take a look. We got these guys behind us who I think should be in school right now, don't you think? Uh, they look about school age to me, but uh, we'll let them off for this. George, 14 years ago, you were still in school. Did you take the day home? I took several days off. What are you talking about? About a week. Well, I'm out here with Lonesome George. He's not lonesome today. We'll give you all the parade action, and we'll talk to the players, hopefully, as they uh, disembark the bus in just a little bit. Jerry, Norman, back to you. Oh. Well, they're back to us now. I'm just cleaning my glasses is what I'm doing. No, he, he was crying the rain. such a I feel so for sorry for Oakland. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, yes, uh, Marge said before that this is all for the fans. Well, Pat Berry is with those fans for whom it's for. Well, I'm Pat? here with George Vogel. Thank you very much, Jerry. I'm here with George Vogel, and we're just waiting. Have you seen a bus yet, George? No buses or anything yet. I think we're expecting Lou Pinella next. I think he's going to pull up in one of the fine automobiles they're dropping the people off in, and then the players should be right behind him. Yeah, you're right, and uh, Marge seems and uh, like she was in a daze, I'm sure she hasn't gotten a lot of sleep and she's been doing a lot of things. wonder when it's going to finally sink in, maybe a week or so before she really sinks in. It, it may take that long. It's going to be interesting to see what she says to these fans. She's been preaching the fans this and the fans that ever since she took over this club. Today she gets a chance to go directly to them and talk, and it's going to be fun to hear what she has to say. I listen to radio. I was listening to them talk on WLW this morning. And, uh, well, is that a bus? Oh, this is the WLW already. Already they're talking about next year, next year, next year. So that should be interesting. It's going to be a tough act. Once you see if that's follow. Lou, I'm going to talk to some fans. Greg, okay. follow me over here. We're going to talk. Who are you? I'm trying to find you. What's your name? But uh, just take a look at that. You can see the fans all the way up that they are packed up there. George, this is exciting, isn't it? It is. No Lou Pinelli yet. The cheers were for uh, one of the policemen on a horse. I guess it was a very pretty horse. Okay. <laughs> they were, they're cheering the cops on horses. Jerry, Norma, back to you. We'll let you know when Lou and the players get here. All right, we're back on Fountain Square, and we've got Mars shot on the podium with us. Very, very warm reception. I'll see if we can get a word with Joe. Doesn't matter if it's raining, does it? Oh, no. It didn't hold anybody back. Uh, it shows the true 
Spirit of Cincinnati. Okay, Joe, thanks a lot. Have fun up there. Joe, all right. This is a madhouse, isn't it? <laughs> Rick Mailer, of course. Rick Mailer and his wife stepping out of their vehicle right now. Rick, can we get a quick word with you? Can. Hey, hey, congratulations. Do you expect anything Thanks. like this? This is great. Oh, not at all. Not at all. It's a great feeling. I see you guys, even though it's raining, you're braving the convertible. Well, these people brave the rain, so that's the least we can do. All right. Best to you. Thanks okay, a lot, Rick. Thank Rick Mailer. Rick, of course, with a fine showing in the playoffs. I'm telling you, the mount had Thomas Moore on the ropes big time. They were playing this one at Dixie Heights. This is the mount's Craig Fitzwater going straight up the middle for a 12-yard touchdown. Mount St. Joe had a 12-3 lead at the half. Thomas Moore trailed by six late in the game, but Brian Shepard helped bring the Rebels back. He goes in from the four to give Thomas Moore a one-point lead. The mount had one last gasp in the final minute, but the 36-yard field goal attempt never had a chance. Thomas Moore holds off Mount St. Joe 19 to 18. The Rebels' record goes to 8 0. Elsewhere today, number one, Thomas Moore has come a long way in a short period of time. The Rebels are only in their third year of existence, but they made powerhouse Dayton sweat one out. Dayton's led by one of Elder's finest, quarterback Steve Keller. But with Dayton driving, Keller gets picked off by Kyle Niederman. The Rebels trailed just 6 0 at the half. Third quarter, it was 12-0 Dayton. That's when Thomas Moore turned to Derek Jett. The Rebels were back within five. In the fourth quarter, the Flyers answered. Pat Hoffaker strolls in for his second touchdown of the game. Dayton has now won 34 regular season games in a row. 18-7 the final. That breaks Thomas Moore's 16-game winning streak. In the final, this big cranker, Rudy Kasamakis. Let me tell you, Rudy was locked in. Why is Rudy so pumped? He wins a hundred thousand dollars, knocks off Mike Trinitsky, two forty-six to one ninety-one. Loser got uh, fifty thousand in this. The runner-up. I think we better go out to Western Bowl while Herb Hoinke is in a mood to give away all this money. Okay. <laughs> One quick question. The Stan and Saint X. So big that did you tell me Bill Cunningham broadcast this game? Oh, he was doing sideline reports oh, on my LW goodness. Radio. Everybody was talking, talking about this about game. That. Two undefeated teams putting it on the line tonight. St. X and Anderson in the Division I Regional Final. Now, this was supposed to be a hair pulling, mouth smashing, toe twisting, in your face affair. As Lynn Matuzic tells us, that's exactly what it was. Less than ideal weather out at Galbraith Field tonight. St. X wins it by a final of 14 to 7. From Galbraith Field, I'm Lynn Matuzic, News 5 Sports. So St. X moves on to the state semifinals against Piqua, while Anderson closes out the season with a school record 11 wins. In the hey, you know, 